the next time cravings come a knocking on your door like ah, hello there's a chocolate over there get your ass moving <laughs> I'm gonna talk through some of the things you can do for yourself when you fall for those cravings you can pick yourself up and understand what's going on in your brain so basically you're just going to become more aware of what your brain's doing so that next time you can actually feel like you're making a choice rather than your body's just going and doing something that you don't want it to do working towards rewiring your brain so that you can change those cravings and any addictions that you feel that you might have Hi everyone, I'm Christina Sky, and welcome back to my channel. We are literally going to go through what you can do for yourself when you fall for your cravings. So let's get into the video. So you've got these cravings, you keep just giving into them and it's getting frustrating for you. You're just beating yourself up, you just, just can't handle what's going on because you really want to change your lifestyle, you really just want to get fit, be healthy, or whatever the craving is. I'm really gonna focus on just sugar-free examples in this, so if you have any other cravings or addictions or stuff like that, then you can kind of mold it into your type of craving or your type of addiction. Having cravings is perfectly normal. It's actually a nat very natural thing. Nature, you know, it's, it's hardwired into us to kind of go to things that give us pleasure and just because it's normal doesn't mean you can't change what is normal you can make a new normal for yourself so for example i made a new normal in my life whereas eating candy and chocolate and all this kind of stuff is normal it's a normal thing they provide it in shops they provide it you know i grew up as it be that was my normal have snacks have meals sometimes don't have meals that was normal for me and I just didn't agree with it, so I changed my new, my normal to being and living a sugar-free lifestyle. So my first point really is, is to just recognize that it is very normal and do not beat yourself up about it. Because at the end of the day, you gotta think of your brain as like, this is you and this is your brain. Your brain is like a, your puppy, your new puppy, your newborn puppy, You've just brought it into your home, and I know it's been there for a while, but you know, you've just become aware of this new puppy, your new your brain, you've become aware of your brain, and you have to now train this puppy to be the way that you want it to be to be, to behave, to act, to react. And if you have had a puppy before or a pet, it's probably more likely a puppy because you train puppies to do things that will keep them safe and you know keep the house clean and stuff like that that's why i use the puppy example so you're going to train this puppy to do what you want it to do you're going to train your brain to do what you want it to do and if you constantly smack beat up the puppy the puppy's going to be abused and hate whatever you're training it to do puppies love positive reinforcement it helps them to grow and it's the exact same thing for your brain you need positive reinforcement for your brain. People who tend to, like for example, people who are like super obese or super depressed or stuff like that, most of the time they stay in that position because they do not do positive reinforcement. They basically just say, bad brain, bad brain, bad brain, bad brain, bad brain, everything it does that you, know, that you don't like. Whereas you could guide your brain and train your brain in a loving and kind of positive way to kind of get it to kind of do what you want it to do. So every time you crave something and you eat chocolate and you beat yourself up, you beat up your brain, you say, no, this is wrong. Your, your brain is going to be like, mm, it's not going to be happy with that. It's just going to be miserable. You're going to be miserable. And it's not a good environment to train in, to learn in. If that makes sense i hope that was a good explanation but <laughs> yeah that's the best that's the best way i could explain it also as well that brain will always feel like this journey in life is miserable every time you eat chocolate you're you're getting pleasure but immediately you're feeling miserable and that's going to be 
constant cycle that your brain's going to go through and, and feel like that's the new normal like you feel good at first but then you feel miserable and really it shouldn't be that way it should be you feel good and then you continue to feel good you know you got make sure your brain knows that it's an it's a it's not a hard journey it's an easy journey it's a pleasurable journey and as much as you don't want it to eat chocolate you don't want it to push you in that direction you have to work together to make that a pos a, a thing and it has to be a positive and loving way you do it because you know you're you know yourself why why would you freaking want to be beaten up about freaking eating a chocolate or eating sugar or something like that you want it to be a good experience that's why you did it <laughs> like so basically next you want to do is you want to slow down and take a step back so when, what i mean there is that say you've just eaten something you don't want to eat you've eaten a chocolate i'm just going to keep using chocolate bar for example you've just you had your cravings you saw this chocolate bar you grabbed it you ate it previous to that you said to yourself i don't want to eat chocolate ever again i just want to be healthy whatever whatever your your dreams or your goals are you you've just basically broken that by eating chocolate <sighs> so you've done that you don't beat yourself up you, you just you just don't beat yourself up you don't go to that uh, you don't go down that path so you've got this path where you freaking eat in the chocolate and you just beat yourself up and you're just like no 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 you did wrong you did wrong i hate myself whatever you want to you say to yourself <laughs> then there's this path where it's like oh that's just life i'm just gonna keep doing it i'm just gonna be complacent i can't give it up i can't do anything about it it's just me it's the normal me i just eat chocolate and i want a different life but you know can't can't change everything and then there's this path this path here going straight forward it's basically you eating the chocolate stopping at the front of the path taking a minute to see what you've done and taking a step back taking a step back and just basically seeing what you've done and understanding what just happened just seeing it for what it is not moving forward yet but taking a step back seeing it for what it is or just pausing for a minute saying i ate a piece of chocolate it's not part of my core values it's not something i want for myself i want to be in a different place than this i want to live healthier i want to live happier but i still ate this chocolate and you've just you've just understood what just happened you've just recognized and realized what's just happened okay so that's what i feel is the second step is just take a moment take it in without beating yourself up and without just accepting and moving on and just pretending it didn't happen you're actually admitting and just accepting and kind of recognizing and acknowledging what happened so going forward from that you need to take time to reflect and evaluate what just happened so you ask yourself questions like why did i give in to that chocolate what was the reason why i ate that chocolate what was i feeling when i before after and during eating that chocolate what are my core values why did i go against my core values why do i keep going against what i really want for myself and maybe just also you can think about keeping a diary to kind of to under, kind of understand where your mind was at at the time when you decided to go and eat that chocolate because sometimes people have other issues that make them do things that they don't really want to do for example binge eating because they had basically stress eating or all other things that people do and makes them eat the only thing i can think of is basically just stress eating it could be stress eating it could just be that this is what you do so you just did it but reflecting and evaluating and asking the right questions when you do this evaluation and this reflection you will end up coming to understand what was going on in your brain and you find this new sense of awareness and once that door is open it's very hard to close it again it's very hard to ignore it for example 
before I became vegan, I couldn't ignore, like when I first figured it out, first it clicked, I couldn't ignore what I'd seen, what I'd found out, the information that had gone in. I literally knew that this was an animal, this is not, not something I want to consume. All the reasons I had in my brain clicked into place and then all the reasons why I wanted to stop eating animals just clicked into place and I couldn't ignore it anymore. It was like the door had opened, the whole shed containing the information had had been blown down and the information was just staring at my face every time I needed to make a choice to eat. And I wasn't enjoying it as for, at first because it was very, very uncomfortable. But once you become aware and you reflect and you actually understand what's going on in your brain, you can't ignore it anymore. It's there, it's, it's fully known to you. So this will help you to be able to move forward. Yeah, you need to understand where your mind is at when it comes to this. Like, you may want something, you may want to be healthier, you may want to be sugar free or whatever it is that you want. But your mind may say, I value the pleasure more than what you say you want. You know, this is your pleasure, this is what you want. The pleasure will definitely overpower that until you are ready to say enough, put pleasure on its back and stand up straight and say, I want this, I am going to have this and I'm going to make it a reality for myself. Your brain may not be ready now to take the the new journey, the new path to being sugar free. But taking in this information right now, you're, you're putting seeds in place for future reference for them to grow and get ready. You're getting them ready to germinate. In simple words, you're taking in the information and eventually, if you if your mind decides to take that path, it will pick up on those past um, bits of information you took in and say, I'm ready now, let's do it. But you have to know, to, you, you, your mind has to fully be ready in order to take this journey. Otherwise, you're just going to keep failing. You're keep going to keep falling into the same trap. And in order to get your mind ready, you may need to deal with other problems that you may be facing first. I had a lot of issues before I started this and I really took some time out to kind of say, okay, you really need to deal with yourself now. I was so focused on the health and life of other people that I never really focused on me. I, I, was, I just wanted distractions of other people around me to be my focus and about the past three years when I got serious you know sick scare you know life-threatening sick scare I I just I was thrown into that that deep end where my mind was just like I'm ready I'm ready now come on let's go <laughs> and yeah I knew I was ready and so many things happened all at once but I knew I was ready and there's some things you may need to go through mentally or you may need to experience in order to be ready you need to know if you you need to kind of know if you are ready or not otherwise you're just going to keep falling for those cravings and if you aren't ready go and deal with other things first stop avoiding things stop going and getting distractions like i did <laughs> and eventually you will get to this point where you're ready it's kind of like the first the previous point but be honest with yourself be honest and understand whether you are actually ready if this is actually what you want ask yourself these questions write it down just what i tell people very regularly is and this is something i learned from uni that i just went to i was so i mean i did it before i went to uni but i never knew it was what it was for but it's called a brain run <clears throat> and basically you just get your your paper and your pen and you just write and you write and you write everything that's on your mind try and make it focus to what this topic that we're talking about or just do about everything, it depends on how you feel at that time. Just write and write and write. Do not cross out anything. Just write whatever your brain is saying onto paper for about a minute, maybe two minutes, maybe five minutes if you want to, as many minutes as you want. Just keep going. Stop when the time's up and reread over it. See where your brain went to, see where you can change things and where you feel you may not be being honest with yourself. And 
honesty with yourself is so important i i can't push that enough it's something that will help you get through this kind of stuff and i know i'm talking about cravings and you're thinking why is all this brain stuff got to do with cravings and it's because it's your brain telling you to go and eat those things to go and pleasure yourself with whatever it is that you're craving you have to literally retrain your brain as i said earlier you have to retrain it and it may not be like a new puppy actually it may be like an old dog and now to say old dogs can't learn new tricks they most certainly can i promise you they can i've taught many old dogs new tricks and your brain can learn tricks all the time work on ways to consciously eat so now this is kind of hard this is a hard step when you eat sometimes you just think oh, i could deal with a pizza right now or oh, i could deal with a chocolate right now when you think that thought really just say it like i just did say it out to yourself and really think about why that thought came to you and why you think that pizza or chocolate or any of these things that is just like what like this doesn't follow into my my wants and what I want for myself really just take that thought understand everything about it and really think really think about what even you saw that day because sometimes yeah <laughs> I see someone or I smell the slight smell of someone eating chips you know like from the chip shop and all of a sudden later in the day I'll be like I want chips and I'm like wait a minute there was someone eating chips today and I smell it this is why I want chips I don't actually I never even wanted chips in my mind it wasn't a thing or you might see some someone on a video where you've like flicked for Instagram or you know something just triggered that thought in your brain and these are things as well that you kind of have to you can control these things basically and for example the Instagram thing you're consuming that information so regularly so many people spend so much time on Instagram you're consuming so much when you're scrolling you're scrolling you're scrolling you may f be following food um, Instagrams, you may be following friends or stuff like that. And say you have a friend who just posts so many pictures of their pizza, their chocolate, their snacks, their ice creams. And you see that very regularly. Something like that can really hold you back. So I'm not saying, you know, unfollow your friend, but... I think it's something you should think about when it comes to what you consume visually and for your any of your other senses and not to avoid but maybe avoid while you're trying to kind of come to terms with everything I think it's something you should avoid and at least for the first few months of trying to deal with changing your lifestyle around I had to avoid a lot of stuff like for example I was sharing a fridge um, in my house and that the person I was with they would eat so it was when I was going vegan as well they would have meat they would have chocolates they would have crisps they would have snacks and I would be there like I really 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 want to eat that right now and it just wasn't helping so what I did was I made my own cupboard I said please allow me to just have this space so I don't have to look in any other part of the cupboards I don't have to look in any other part of the fridge so I have a part of my fridge where I look directly into the bottom shelf I don't look up I don't look I'm not in the middle of anyone I'm literally at the bottom so I just go in I'm like what can I eat today I've built up that habit I mean I don't need it anymore I can see things and kind of be like oh okay I don't need it you know I don't crave it I mean there's been rare it's you know sometimes it's very rare but sometimes i feel like oh, i need that i could eat that right now <laughs> but it's not really a problem for me right now and you need to kind of work to get to that kind of space i mean some people can work without avoiding but it's so much easier and so much more effective for you to kind of avoid seeing smelling hearing about and stuff like that for at least the first few months and then slowly incorporating that back in where you feel like you can 
so i know i said consciously eating but i feel like maybe it's more like consciously consuming and i mean through consciously consuming through all your senses because you do hold an attachment to some things that you know your brain your brain's just like it has like nostalgic attachments to specific colors or specific wrappers or like as in chocolate wrappers or stuff like that or specific smells and I know it's hard to avoid everything but as much as you can avoid as possible will really help you in this path that you're taking <laughs> so consciously understanding and choosing consciously what you consume through all your senses not just your eating senses all your like senses okay sorry there's like a guy staring at me from outside and i don't want him to, <laughs> to look at me while i'm filming so the next point next point is to set goals for yourself okay goals are so unbelievably important in order for you to be very successful at dealing with your cravings okay and this is going back to the same point of positive reinforcement now for example when i went sugar free my first goal was i mean when i first took it seriously recently i've done many different things in the past to get over sugar but this is the most recent thing i've done and it was the 30 day challenge where i set the goal to kind of be sugar free like perfect perfect sugar free for 30 days so i started day one i went cold turkey straight up until day 30 and i achieved it i achieved it twice actually but the first time i did it for 90 days and then i gave up and i went back to sugar for like half a year and then i did it for 30 days again and i achieved it and i was so 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 proud of myself that i just i felt so emotionally like i was so happy and i know i did it before but i didn't think i would be able to do it again i honestly didn't think I didn't feel it i didn't it wasn't really in my mind to do it and i did it that's exactly what goals do they keep you going forward when you set these goals you can reward yourself at the end and you don't have to reward yourself but some people work well when there's a reward at the end so i wouldn't suggest if you're going sugar free to reward yourself with a massive chocolate cake afterwards <laughs> um stick to the kind of principle um if that's even the right way to say that but you know what i mean it's like you can reward yourself by taking yourself on a shopping trip dude there's so many things you could do for yourself to kind of make your brain feel like I did well I did a good job so I get a different pleasure that I'm not so addicted to if that makes sense and I can have a good time with that rather than just throwing myself into sugar all the time <laughs> so yeah I set that goal and then I just kept setting goals I kept on saying I wanted to make this my new life and that was the big ultimate goal and I'm sticking to it it could be the tiniest goal of just doing it for one day and seeing how it goes and rewarding yourself afterwards and the goals will make you stronger and they will make you happy when you achieve them and when you get through them and also as well when you set goals don't beat yourself up again please do not beat yourself up if you don't achieve them or you fall back into cravings just keep going i suggest that you avoid empty alternatives so for example, a lot of people who go sugar free decide, oh, I'm gonna try Diet Coke, or oh, I'm gonna try Coke Zero, or something like that, or low fat, or um, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, eat sugar free stuff, because that's the point, but don't have sugar free stuff that replaces the sugars with sweeteners, or empty calorie stuff, because it just defeats the purpose. It kind of just i don't know if this is a point it's probably just like a bonus point but avoid those empty alternatives they do not help and i mean maybe for some people it helps but that i feel for myself for myself personally that they're just as bad as the actual thing and a lot of the a lot of the sweeteners are actually worse than sugar 
so try your best to avoid those and don't go towards those to get over you know yeah when it comes to veganism i feel like alternatives help at the beginning because there's a lot of things you have to cut out but when it comes to sugar there's a different kind of craving and addiction towards sugar that when you take sweeteners it doesn't help it so try not to go down that route <laughs> now let's say you're getting to a point where you feel like your brain's ready your you are ready your 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 whole setup is ready your atmosphere is ready you just feel ready while you're doing it i feel like it's good to just explore the world of other food that you may think that you don't like but some things that you think you don't like because you had it as a kid or you just don't like the smell of it you may actually come to love it. My great example is peanut butter. I never liked peanut butter when I was really, really young. And same with mushrooms as well, I hated mushrooms. And I don't know why, it might have just been the way it looked when I was a kid, I just didn't like it. I tried it as I grew up, love it now. <laughs> it's like in every meal or it's so delicious, like I eat peanut butter every morning, it's like my protein, it's so good. It kind of makes me feel like I'm eating something sweet, but I'm not. Yeah, so basically take some time out every week to kind of explore new foods, explore new recipes, and just enjoy food. <laughs> That's my final point, I guess, to you guys. The more and more you work on this, the more and more you will come to understand yourself bit by bit. It doesn't happen overnight, and it's not as easy as, oh my god, I know how to stop my cravings, you know? This video isn't going to make it happen overnight. It will help you make it happen faster maybe if you follow the steps and maybe some other steps that you might need for yourself personally but just just know it's not going to happen overnight it doesn't happen overnight for anyone unless you know they're just amazing i don't know <laughs> it took me years to come to this point in my life where i'm not even, it's not even perfect it's okay but it took me years to come to this point and i'm very happy with my progress because I was at that I was on you know those paths I was talking about this path where you just eat it and you beat yourself up I was on that for a long time then I was on the path of you eat it and you just become complacent and just move on and just don't even think about it but now I feel like I'm on the path of eating it no not even eating it anymore I've gone on a different path now I don't eat it anymore I basically make different choices in my life <laughs> So I was on the path of eating it and just trying to understand where it came from for a few years but the other two paths were just like years and years of my life um, and I'm glad I'm off those paths because I wanted a new normal for myself and I made a new normal for myself and just the more and more I work on it the better I am with it because I'm still not perfect it's still not perfect with me and there's still lots I can work on but that comes with understanding myself more, with experience and just building up my knowledge and learning more. So yeah, I hope that helps you guys. <laughs> Make sure you share this with friends that you feel may need something like this to help them with what they're going through, their cravings, their addictions. It's not every point that you could possibly do but I feel like it's a good amount of things you can do to kind of at least get the ball rolling and moving on from complacency or you know a self-destruction <laughs> if this video helped and or you just liked it give it a big thumbs up it lets me know that I'm doing a good job <laughs> and comment below if you actually like this type of video and what day of being sugar free are you on? Are you sugar free day number one? Are you sugar free? I'm kind of thinking about going sugar free because that's still day one. <laughs> are you sugar free day 365? I'm nearly there. Woo! <laughs> I'm gonna make a video soon about my one year journey being sugar free so you can look out for that. But yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that, I guess. <laughs> To all your sugar free, to all your sugar cravings and any other cravings you have, hopefully you can overcome them with this video and other sources of information out there and just you helping yourself and getting yourself 
to where you want to be okay it's all about you doing the hard work no one's gonna do it for you i'm gonna leave it there anyways i will see you in the next one love and light Like a word, like a word, like a word.